Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. Well, today we make the step from two to three, and that's a huge one, as we will see. So people understood uh, surfaces, so two manifolds, well, pretty early on. Um, and well, what I showed you eventually kind of says that we can ignore all topology and just think of them as being combinatorial objects. That's a pretty cool result, right? And then maybe, well, the guess would be maybe the next step is also not so bad. We would expect it to be more complicated. It's dimension three, it's not dimension two anymore, but maybe uh, the step isn't too bad. Um, turns out that three manifolds are three manifolds, whatever that means. And I'm going to talk about three manifolds and some properties from now on uh, for quite a while, actually. Kind of the main problem, if you want, they get kind of a bit, little bit wild. We'll always see some tools to attack them. It's still kind of doable. So it's not completely uh, out of range. Um, anyway, so the problem is a little bit that they tend to live in four space and it gets a bit tricky to imagine. So um, not like, well, surfaces live in three space. We can imagine them easily. We can model them combinatorially. Three manifolds, well, kind of a different type of category. But let's have a look. Let's today just stay with some very basic ideas about them. Um, they're already exciting enough in some sense. So uh, for a surface, I told you kind of that the surface is locally made out of disks. And well, a disk is just, well, this what whatever you see here on the uh, left-hand side, it's two, two dimensional. Okay, so we can just generalize that. So a surface, well, surfaces were locally made of, out, out of disks and well, Clearly, we can just say, well, maybe for three manifolds, the next step, we want them to be locally made out of 2D, uh, 3D disks. And here's an example of a 3D disk. It's a solid ball. Um, this one is a, bit, a little bit of a big solid ball, but anyway, so uh, it's quite different. So one dimension higher. So three manifolds should be locally made out of solid balls. A standard example, if you look around, uh, just, Wherever you are, you will see R3, and it's locally made out of bolts in the sense that you, for example, could fill the whole space with bolts if you would like to do that. Um, so if you allow intersections of bolts, you definitely can do it, but you could certainly put locally a bowl into R3, and that's all I, what we want, right? So locally, every point should have a neighborhood that is a bowl, um, and yeah, well, those are, that's the whole point, right? So you can easily put uh, bolts into R3. Um, and that's a definition of more, that's kind of a basic property of a three manifold. So R3 is actually a three manifold. It's not closed. And that's well, kind of the problem because you might complain now, I told you about four dimensions. R3 certainly fits, fits in three dimensions, clearly by definition. Um, uh, anyway, um, so for closed, you can't. So the first example of a closed, uh, for a three manifold would be the 3D sphere. And that's already pretty hard to imagine. So let's look at the 2D sphere, which is also a ball, but note that the 2D sphere is a hollow ball while I was talking about solid balls before. And the way to imagine the hollow, hollow ball is just to have a soccer ball at home. There you go, that's your hollow ball. Or maybe uh, you don't need to buy any, but you can have a movie of, of just circles. So, right, so if you slice here, you roughly see this picture. If you slice here, it gets a bit bigger. If you slice here, it gets a bit bigger. If you slice here, it gets smaller again, and so on. So, this here is a, a movie. Time is at the bottom of uh, two dimensional pictures, uh, or sorry, one dimensional pictures, which actually gives you a two dimensional picture. So, time is here, the uh, extra dimension. And we can do that with some kind of real movie of uh, higher dimensional objects. So, if you now think of having and each movie, already one of those guys here, what you actually get, if you just think about it, just it's slicing through this object that secretly lives in four space, what you get is a three-dimensional sphere. Um, and this is really the anal analogy that we have seen in the two-dimensional world. So all these two-dimensional objects, the closed ones, the sphere, the torus, whatever they were, they needed at least R3 to be realized. So. Um, they don't live in R2, and it's the same here. So you need at least R4, one more, to realize a closed 
three many forward. And that makes things a bit tricky, of course, because now we are kind of live in a dimension that is not super easy to imagine anymore. I really like this picture of the movie with the time being the extra dimension, but clearly it's more complicated than just uh, one movie frame, which was the two dimensional picture. So it gets a bit more complicated. It's kind of expected, but um, it will turn out to get quite a bit more complicated, but we we'll, won't see that today. Um, what you can also do, so it, in some sense you should say, okay, it doesn't matter. I can also imagine a 512 dimensional sphere by just having a movie in a movie in a movie. So you could think of, for example, a, a color dimension red, orange, yellow, green, or something, and the time dimension, and each slice is uh, one of the whatever kind of dimensional picture. So each row and each column gives a whatever kind of dimensional picture. In this case, uh, rows and columns give soccer balls, so the, the two-dimensional ones. Uh, so the whole two-dimensional movie, in this case, gives that F3. Uh, that's called a double movie, and it's sometimes used for three manifolds as well, and you can use that for four manifolds by just inserting higher pictures and so on and so on. Um, hope that makes sense. Like uh, you always have some extra dimension and in your movie frame, um, you have whatever kind of dimension and you can iterate that. So you can have a movie in a movie in a movie in a movie. And essentially you could have, uh, can illustrate objects of any dimension. I'm not claiming that this really uh, gives you uh, very detailed insights into 500 manifolds, but in principle you could. Anyway, so in general, we really need a better way of doing this. Um, also, it's, it looks very tempting. It's 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 very great for certain three manifolds, um, but this double movie at one point is just not the best way of doing it. So we need some better trick of doing it. And it will, I will show you one eventually, not today anymore. So let's go to the formal definition. Um, so there are two definitions, the one without a boundary, so the closed one, and the one with a boundary. And it's the following definition, blah, blah, blah. There are some technical assumptions. Ignore the technical assumptions. Um, so the point is every point here has a local neighborhood uh, isomorphic to a disk. And here it's a disk or a half disk, which comes from the following, whenever you have a boundary component, well, clearly locally, you still could put your disk here, but around the boundary, you can only put a half disk. So the difference between the boundary and the non-boundary is that one of them has disks or 3D disks in this case, and one of them has 2D disks, uh, sorry, half disks, still 3D half disks. And that's the definition of a three manifold. And just for, as I said, for completeness, I added the technical assumptions that I'm going to use here as well. Um, they all have their right to exist, but I still won't comment on them anyway. So any reasonable three manifold I'm going to show you will satisfy those anyway. Uh, maybe worthwhile to point out that my manifolds are never empty, um, whatever, <laughs> by definition. Uh, anyway, um, so here's our um, movie um, in this picture. So on the left, we have a closed one. This is S3. And on the right, we have a, a one with boundary. This is the, this is a disk itself. It's D3 and the boundary is S2. So the boundary is just the surface of the earth and the earth is just a ball, I guess. A, big, a very big ball, but it's a ball. Um, so that's the definition of a three manifold. And it doesn't look so bad and then it gets Pretty complicated. So let, let's look at an, an example. And we kind of know examples already. It's kind of fun. So if you take a knot and you thicken it a little bit, so here you have a thickened version of a knot. It goes in this white uh, region. And let's say this sits in R3. Um, then you can imagine or you can create three manifold as follows. It's a knot complement. So you take the, uh, the R3 without the knot, the thickened version of the knot, and whatever remains. So it's the outside green region is a non-trivial object. You can see here those little paths going around in this manifold. It's clearly a non-trivial object. They can kind of not, if you want, uh, along the knot. That sounds a little bit funny, um, but um, that's kind of the starting point here. So you can kind of create a huge family of three manifold invariants by just take your favorite knot, picking it a little bit, remove it from space. Whatever remains is a three manifold. Um, and as we will see, it's kind of the main point of the story and a very surprising in some sense 
um, that three manifolds and knots are really, really tight, tightly, uh, closely related. So they're essentially the same objects in some sense. We'll see what that means. Anyway, so I wanted to motivate a little bit the story about three manifolds. I give you the definition, but essentially what it's just saying is everything is now made out of three-dimensional objects. And we run into a little bit of the problem that we need to think of them as being, or they actually live in four space, so we need a better way to think about them. And a little spoiler here, the knots will turn out to be really, really useful to do that. Anyway, for now, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.